I stand between uh, all entrepreneurs and the VCs, because that's the next session. So I stand between you and the money. I'll make this quick and uh, perhaps a little, uh, yeah, you know, a bit of a reality check. So thanks a lot for having me here. I'm going to you know, run you through uh, the printer story. I just want to do an audience check. Uh, how many VCs in the audience, please? VCs. Venture capitalists. But we know there are VCs out here. I, I met one of them outside. Yeah? Uh, OK. So uh, VCs having lunch outside. Uh, I'm very impressed that a bunch of VCs have shown up out here on a, a Saturday afternoon uh, when they should be playing golf. But they've actually shown up where entrepreneurs are. Amazing. Uh, how many entrepreneurs who've already started businesses? OK, great. I know a lot of people have asked you this question, but I got in only when Alok's session was on. How many folks out here on the cusp of entrepreneurship? OK, great. OK, that gives me an audience check. What I'm going to do is not focus on my last uh, perhaps one year, but focus on the seed and fundraising part of it. You know, I think uh, moving into starting the venture part of it. And you can ask me specific questions. Because if you don't ask specific questions, you're going to learn nothing, right? I used to ask specific questions. You, know, you could ask me everything perhaps even a range of my salary, because that's the only way we can learn something from each other. OK, uh, oh, I don't have a screen out here. So uh, what do we do? Just a very quick one. Um, uh, we are a chain of retail stores uh, that offer easy printing, consumers, small businesses. Uh, we do a bunch of products, as well as bespoke uh, services. Uh, I think menus that you're, uh, the agenda that you're reading is something typical that's bespoke that's done at Printo. It's a place you can walk in and get uh, business cards, uh, uh, yeah, brochures, leaflets, letterheads, as well as consumer products like, um, uh, you know, e photographs, printed on t-shirts, mugs, canvas prints. Um, how many of you all have uh, her, used a Printo? Yeah. Okay, good. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. That pays for the fuel that got me here. Okay. Uh, uh, how do we do this? We have a hub and spoke model. Some general boring stuff, but uh, just a very quick one. Uh, we, we have stores where we print locally, and we also send it to a centralized hub, from which we farm it out further when it comes to some specialized prints. Okay. Um, we have 17 stores, Bangalore, most of them, one in Hyderabad. Uh, we are 200 plus employees. We make some money. Uh, quickly moving on to what uh, uh, a bit about me. Uh, how many folks from Bombay here? Ah, three, four, five, six. Hey, not bad, not bad. Okay, uh, Alok was from Bombay. We both started off around the same time, and it was amazing to see some common trends in the story. And I'll talk about the common trends. So, you know, he gone to school in Bombay, junior college in Xavier's. I did my engineering in. Uh, Bombay, no, all my girlfriends from Bombay, my wife is from Bombay, um, <coughs> lots of experience at college, but nothing to do with education. So went and did, uh, you know, uh, did software engineering, uh, learned nothing, but gained a lot of experience. I remember uh, the only time I regretted not really attending class was uh, in, um, in the first year in the company that I'd started. We downloaded the, you know, the TCP IP RFC. I think I remember the number. It's 1108 or 1088, one of them. Or maybe I'm too old for you guys. You know, so that's, that's a TCP IP RFC, which would you know, describe the protocol, how it works. And uh, my partner asked me, that, what are you doing, man? And I told him, I left the option, mein chhod diya tha. You know, which means that during my exams, we used to easily skip a few topics. TCP IP was one of those topics that I skipped. Right? And I had no clue about it. And that's the one which. I wish I'd read about in Tannenbaum. Tannenbaum was the standard Bible for networking. I see some heads nodding. So I'll move on from there. Um, I like to, you know, uh, people like to call me a serial entrepreneur. A lot of my friends call me a serial undertaker. I have uh, shut down as many companies as I've started. Uh, the first one was not bad. You know, I, I moved out. I had a good exit. That's the company I started called DBS Internet. It started under another name, and then we got a business house called DBS to in invest into it. And 150-person um, uh, uh, software solutions company uh, focusing on transaction systems on the web. Uh, 
we, we just got lucky, right time, right place. Uh, nobody knew about the internet. I remember some of the stories that Alok was saying. Uh, there was a guy from uh, Time Audio whom I called. And he told me, why are you internet people keeping on calling me? Why doesn't one person from your company call me? These are those times, right? This is 1996. Uh, then I started an AI software company with the small money that I made uh, in my first venture. But in California, we started this company with development centers out here. It was my most passionate venture. Uh, lost most of my money there. Yeah, so that shows the, uh, the red dollars. It should have actually been a smiley uh, because it was most passionate. Didn't raise any money from anyone that was you know, lost in excess of uh, you know, a quarter million dollars out there. Yeah, leveraged myself. And then went into employment for about four years. Uh, three, to, three and a half to four years. Yeah, I speak as if it was jail, but I made the most money when I was employed, right? For, uh, for some reason, because I was a consultant, so uh, uh, tax benefits, you know, so anyways get a 33% uh, kicker in that, but also because, uh, uh, you know, perhaps uh, there was a structure I could perform better, there were, you know, my, my boss was kind enough, generous enough, bunch of reasons. But this is a valid point that I keep referring to, that nowadays, Employment gives significant money as compared to stuff before. Hey, Josh, welcome in. We've got a VC here. Come on, give him a big hand. <laughs> Footprint Ventures, OK. We've got Sequoia as well. Yeah. Uh, Printer Journey, uh, so I'll come to the perhaps the specifics of, uh, yeah, you know, of uh, how we started Printer and what a lot of people out here, I was briefed, are going through. Uh, who's writing a business plan out here right now, or thinking of a business idea? Anybody? A few, few. So, so it's relevant. The only reason I'm checking is to check relevance, so I can move on or not move on. Um, when I, yeah, so I moved back to India about six years ago, and I started doing a bunch of back of the envelope calculations, which um, uh, were interestingly because I failed in ventures before, taught me should focus on cash. Yeah? How much money will you make, rather than how cool the idea is. Um, so that helped me a lot. And um, the two or three ideas that we, you know, really, uh, one was fashion retail. I wanted to do what's known as top shop in UK and India. Why? Because my sister's a fashion designer. I knew a bunch of people in the industry who could manufacture. I uh, realized my father hadn't worked hard enough to give me enough money to let me start a retail business in the fashion world. So we moved to another one called Hajam. So we also thought of calling it smart cuts. So, uh, quick, no-nonsense cuts, you know, especially for men. Because I thought the ladies' uh, hair, hair market, hairdressing market was really well served. The male market was underserved. Yeah. And uh, finally, thought of print shops as well. These were all parallel. Had more data on that, found more confidence, and decided to do print off. Some objection handling lessons that comes, uh, that will come all of your way. So a bunch of people objected, right? My, my dad said, you're going to be a printer. Yeah. You're going to start a Xerox shop. Yeah. I say, yeah. So he says, uh, my dad is Marwadi as well. But he never did his own business. He's, uh, he's an engineer. And he yet works with the shipyard. So he said, look, during my time, if you were useless, you wouldn't get a job. So the family would say, put him in the business. But if you're really useless, you couldn't risk putting him in the business. So you would say, let's start a printing press for him. He'll get some work or the other, right? So he said that this is what you're doing after, you know, uh, perhaps coming back to India. Um, I gave him one message, which I thought was my, one of my few original lines. I told him, uh, Dad, for every uh, 10,000, every one Dhirubhaya money, there are 10,000 entrepreneurs who drank, right? For one big success. That's the rough math they say. I believe it's even more skewed. But for one big success, there are about 10,000 fools like us. So at least statistically, I'm very significant for Dhirubhai Ambani to succeed. So please don't treat me this way. Show me a little more respect. So anybody scoffs at you, I think you need to say the, the very fact that you're trying entrepreneurship, one smart guy is going to make it somewhere, right? Uh, decision process, uh, spoke to industry guys, a uh, bunch of them. I spoke to a lot of industry guys uh, because yeah, I had aged and I realized that uh, I didn't have too many shots at entrepreneurship. So I need to get this not as wrong as I did in my, in my previous AI company. Um, 
took surveys. I spoke to a lot of people when you speak, so a lot of entrepreneurs when you speak and say, hey, this is a cool idea, we tend to suffer from a confirmatory bias. What's a confirmatory bias? You basically say, uh, you speak to five people, the one person who says, you got a good point, you say, hey, yeah, you're an intelligent man. And you say, you got a very good point, you're a very intelligent man, and then we won, right? And who are these four guys? Oh, they're pessimists, looking down upon me, okay? And this actually happens in entrepreneurship. I'm sure all the entrepreneurs out here have seen that. I know VCs have seen that with entrepreneurs being pretty much focused on the idea out there. Uh, but you can't change that. So you've got to finally go and do what you, uh, what you want to. So my first lesson, this is a lesson for myself. It's not a lesson for anybody else. Lesson for myself is at first listen, keep listening, and this is go ahead and do what you want to do. Okay. Initial team, so a lot of stress on team. And I think rightly so, Alok stressed on teams. Um, he, so most of you all, and I, I speak to a few entrepreneurs who say that I've not been able to put a team together. I think uh, that's tough, that is, that is required. You need to keep networking more, meet more people, look around you, use LinkedIn. Just, I, had, I used, my style was just meeting more people. And I think if you're gonna be an entrepreneur, you'll have to put resources together, not just a technology. So, uh, you will have to go and meet people. I faced a particular problem. My business was uh, non-tech. My background was tech, and I was not in India for some time. So when I came in, I knew nobody. Most of my friends had traveled, uh, traveled abroad, or, you know, moved on to technology fields, and they had no clue about businesses on the ground. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you know, I spoke to many, pitched to a lot. I pitched to the senior guys at Xerox. Uh, my partner is ex-Xerox. Uh, but that's not why uh, she, she found a place on the board. It's because she knew something about printing. Um, secondly, I spoke to guys who he, very senior at HP, uh, pitched it to them. At the most, they have to say no, but they were smart guys. Yeah? They gave me an opinion. They didn't want to join. Great. No problem. Um, and then I looked closer home. I almost made a friend a partner, uh, be a very close buddy of mine, and then finally looked even closer, convinced my wife who was ex-Xerox, she was with Xerox in uh, India as well as in UK. I thought that this, she would make a great uh, technical person. Yeah. She incidentally runs retail while uh, I hang out with friends. So that was a smart choice. And I have to thank Coffee Day, who's a Sequoia portfolio company, and Barista uh, for making most of these meetings happen, because that's where you're gonna meet most of your guys, right? So, you turn, I used to walk in, make friends with the manager there, and say, could you turn the music down, please? You know, I've got an important interview today. And uh, because, yeah, both these places play pretty loud music. Uh, lesson is, uh, team is everything. Culture is even more than everything. Uh, I will not stress this point too much, because you may not be able to relate it right now, at least the early stage, I wouldn't relate, it, uh, relate to it as much. But having them on the same, cultural wavelength is very important. Uh, for example, our business, we're trying to build around customer service. I did a senior hire, uh, very good guy, very efficient, but he used to always say, you know, Manish, when a customer opens his mouth, that means they're lying, okay? That's how he used to deal with customer complaints, okay? But he was great in every other way. We used to sit down, have a beer, everything. He was vice president retail. I had to let him go, yeah? But he'd built a great team, yeah? Culturally, we had overlooked this point. I knew it bothered me somewhere, but we'd overlooked it. Finally, we had to let him go. Okay, raising money, yeah. So, put it all on an Excel. I'm sure everybody's worked on Excel. Put something, said, okay, to prove your concept, you need maybe two or three stores, you need two crores, okay? Let's, we, let's go and try to raise these two crores. The initial few lakhs were very easy. And I'm, uh, I also, uh, besides re uh, reaching out to friends and family, I reached out to advisors, uh, whom I thought were credible names in the industry. Okay, uh, not necessarily, you know, uh, those who would add operational value, but credibility, right? So, if uh, so, one of my advisors I reached out to was Praveen Gandhi. Now, if I so, you look at a bunch of people and say, okay, that guy's got, he's he seems to be a smart guy. He he has smart things to say. Let's reach out to him to be an advisor. And because Praveen Gandhi is very well known in the industry, if he bought into my idea, and he grilled me quite a bit, once he bought into my idea, he, uh, you know, there would be a little, uh, little less resistance from the others. Yeah. So it was kind of a validation of the idea as well. So it's good to get your advisors in. I just had one rule. You can't advise me without putting your money in the game. 
right, to skin in the game. So you, even if you put 50,000 rupees, you got to do that. So, uh, but most of these people put, uh, you know, I had, I raised money in nuggets of uh, 10 lakhs. That's a plug for you, Wenki. Nuggets, yeah, 10 lakhs. You'll figure out the joke later. Uh, so nuggets of 10 lakhs, and uh, that's how we raised money. It's easier to raise small, small amounts from one person rather than asking somebody for 50 lakhs, right? So uh, I, I, friends and family also put in, but I used friends and family only after I got my advisors on board, yeah? And you can ask me specific questions around this post that I'm sure a bunch of uh, us would be happy to answer. So I think at some point in entrepreneurship, you'll have to switch to saying, I want to do this company, and I, I switched from saying, I want to start this chain of stores, to I am starting this chain of stores. By the way, I'm doing this in February, it's launching in Bangalore. Okay? Suddenly the last 30, 40 lakhs came in really fast. Okay? So I think this is an important switch in your mind. And it was an important switch in my mind, which kind of affected, uh, you know, uh, yeah, changed the perception of my investors. So, of course, my lesson was that people jump onto moving trains. If you're saying, I'm going to do this, they're waiting and watching. Yeah? The day he'll do it, we'll start. I've got, uh, yeah, so we, well, first and second store quickly, just because they'll have some nuggets on ops or whatever. Uh, drove to Bangalore, bag, baggage, uh, mattress, rented apartment from a, a dear friend uh, in an apartment from office, Koramangla first block, uh, and uh, started our first store in Koramangla. It was two months behind schedule, project management, real world, suddenly techie faces real world. You know, nobody comes, and by my architect that, uh, so where do you want the DG, Manish? I said, what DG? DG, DG, DG Manish. I said, what DG, Kiran, what's the DG? Okay. You don't know what's a DG? He looked around. Tell him what's a DG. Somebody said, genset. I said, genset? Generator. I said, shoot, why do I need a generator? You know, this is, everybody in Bangalore needs a generator. So I was a newbie, right? Suddenly, my whole Excel had 15 lakhs extra required for the three stores. Yeah. So you can never plan enough. There are enough things that are going to come your way. And this should have been a simple, straightforward thing for anyone, uh, but not for the smart kid from Bombay. Right? Um, he, no schedules, he had to shout at carpenters doing that. So anybody who's, I have a lot of respect people doing physical businesses in, uh, in uh, non-tech world because they have to deal with even more shit, right? So uh, my theater training uh, he, uh, he came, to, he came to my rescue because I used to get into a mode every morning, walk in there and abuse, just abuse, four letter words, everything, and got my work done dramatically easier. You know, so that was my first lesson. First hire was a project manager because I had to get out of character. Uh, grand vision was clean store, no nonsense service. You come in with a ready file, we'll print it for you, sir. Yeah? We got slapped in our face, we changed our model in four weeks. Nobody in India wants uh, you know, no service, they want full service. So with the, uh, we just debated about it because customers would walk in and say, what are you, no, so you're, you're not gonna change this. You're not going to design this for me. You want to charge me if you want to design or change anything out here. What are you here for? That guy around the corner will do it free of cost at half the price. We started getting a little nervous, but we changed one of those elements, not all the elements. And the one element was we started offering modification and design services. Yeah. Um, we put a second store in Infosys. Uh, I worked on Infosys over a f cold call. Uh, got a store in there after nine months. Um, and, you know, walking into, uh, I don't know how many InfoCNs out here. Okay, so I'll moderate. I think it's an awesome facility, inspirational. You know, walking in there, say, oh, wow, this happens in India. Good, after you got all these. Great credibility. Oh, you have a store in Infosys. Has anybody gone to Infosys who's not an employee? Oh, good. So you, you stood at the gate, right? Yeah. They let you through that whole process with the store. You must be bloody good, man, you know? So Infosys is awesome credibility, right? And uh, so that was great. Negative side, it was a big time suck. Bureaucracy, dealing with people out there, on where do you put up a store, we want electricity, bunch of things, you know? Because it's a large company, they have rules, they have processes. It was also demotivating at times, you know, because large companies at times get arrogant, you know? And uh, I remember one of the VPs, you know, walking into my store once, you know, which we just launched, we, uh, and I have my team there, and uh, we were like some 16 people, 
and that, that store had four people, and I was standing there. And uh, he told me, Manish, I don't know what business is this. This is going to fail. You're going to waste your time. And I don't know what you're doing out here. He didn't need to say that, right? And it was a bad day for me. And I was just chatting with my team about how this is not just two shops. We're going to do a few more shops. He walks in and says that. Maybe he had a bad day. But I was extremely upset. You know, and I, I saw to myself, next time I meet Narayan Murthy, I'm going to say, Mr. Murthy, this is what your VP told me. You know, and, uh, but that's all over. That's all. But this is what happens at large companies. They're dealing with a lot of shit, and you're one of them. Right? So uh, my lesson was your first models are mostly crap. At least mine were. You switch it quickly. And large companies are not necessarily great customers. Okay? Because there's a queue of people lining up to serve them. Yeah. We are yet impanel customers with Wipro, Infosys, a bunch of these guys. The amount of business my retail individual consumer and individual SMB customer does is, uh, so our revenues from uh, SMBs and retail and everything is about 80%. 20% revenues from coming in from enterprise customers whom we go to. Yeah? Though that's increasing dramatically, but I wish I had not done some of these things in the beginning. So don't necessarily go and get that big account because you're just going to waste your time. Uh, more funding uh, won't go into too much detail about this. Uh, four months to money in the bank. This is because I knew the f seed fund guys. I thought we had a cool company. I thought I was a smart guy. So when, when I raised money from Sequoia, it took me six months. Okay? And we had some very positive meetings. Right? But I think the standard time to raise money, money in the bank, is nine months. Without, so anybody is thinking that, hey, next March, I have, I'm going to raise money, and uh, I'll have a million dollars in the bank or 200K in the bank. Not possible. It's already November. November, Diwali. December, VCs don't work. January, VCs don't work. Uh, so February. January is bonus time. So uh, you either decide you want to be there or not there. Yeah, and, uh, he, uh, and February is the one month. Uh, they get lots of plans to evaluate. Anyways, nine months is standard, even if uh, you were in normal, uh, normal claims. Fundraising less, lessons, of course, early stage. I think everybody stressed it. Uh, there, are, uh, there are VCs out here who are going to give you a, a very good sounding board. Yeah? So that's amazing, and you need it, because we need somebody to bounce off ideas from, right? I don't think VCs fund early stage in India, full stop. You know, I mean, I can argue with a VC right away on this point. Look at the data. So don't waste your time with VCs on early stage. Yeah. Because look at why. Look at it structurally. This is how I understand it, right? Um, yeah, you either need to, at an early stage, you either need to know the industry. So suppose any of you guys, you know, you have a friend who comes in and says, will you invest in me? So you either need to know that guy's industry as well as you need to know him very well. Those are two things you take a bet on. Yeah. Now, India is such a new market, there's everybody is focusing right across. You know? if, if you take Sequoia, which is a very strong VC internationally in tech, consumer tech, um, you know, Google, Yahoo, bunch of them. But India, there's not enough deals in tech or consumer tech for them to just focus on that. So they've gone on to retail. Yeah? They went on to Cafe Coffee Day is a Sequoia investment. Yeah? So uh, they've sp they're spread thin. So now their competence or ability to make a call at early stage, I feel, is restricted. So this, I rest my case. I'm not going to argue it anymore that you are wasting it. Go and meet VCs. But you're wasting your time if you're expecting money from there. You'll get great ideas. You'll get great direction. You'll build a relationship. When you've gone to the next stage, they will come and say, hey, good. I spoke to this guy. He had some promises. He's gone there. I think I should put in money now. I think it's good relations to build, but don't expect money. So let's go, to, uh, let's go for angels. Um, angels, again, remember, they are just weighing out uh, between fear and greed. I'm scared you'll run away with my money. Hey, big, big, this guy's going to be like Kinko's, FedEx Kinko's, and I won't get a part of it. Fear and greed. But if you, I use the rule that, you know, if I don't convince a guy, I don't get a convincing look in the first uh, half an hour of a conversation, uh, at least for a new concept, uh, I don't think I would pursue the person 
too much. I can pursue him for negotiations for everything else, but not on this bit. So um, look around, look at guys who've got some money in Bangalore. I wish I'd started printo, fundraising for Printo in Bangalore. You know? Half the guys from Wipro and Infosys have got tons of money. Right? I, I wouldn't need any of my angels out there. I would have raised, and I think that's a good source to go to. Right? There are lots of your friends out there. Um, and the VCs, there are two or three exceptions out there. Yeah? And uh, yeah, who do invest in early stage. Right? But even then, if you look at the deal portfolio, it's not as heavy. So I'm not going to name the two or three exceptions because there's always debate on who that exception is. Yeah? OK. Uh, last couple of ones with lots of techies and engineers. Right? So something to do with graph, where uh, this is something I particularly like. Uh, I sketched this out. And, I, and uh, this is not an original thought, but I, I uh, heard about it from a Stanford professor. And uh, sketch this out, the probability of outcome that's acceptable to an entrepreneur. Right? So if I'm starting a business, I've started Printo, I definitely don't want to be bankrupt. So zero probability down there. Gazillionaire, I don't mind. But at the same time, I don't think that's what I'm shooting for necessarily. Right? I'm very happy in the middle, going from moderate to good success. Right. That's a typical entrepreneur. You don't want to, you don't want to fail. You know, you want to get some success. Look at Alok. He's at it for like 15 years. Alok, uh, his company and DBS Internet started at the same time, um, and he's been at it. Yeah. So yeah, that's the entrepreneur expectation model. Can you can you understand this, Gotha? Now let's look at the VC expectation model, right? But they, they announce it. It's not that they say, hey, this is a backdoor thing which I'm going to stab you with. They say, this is what my business model is. Right? And fair enough. So you say, I don't mind if you're going to shut shop. Shut shop, shut shop soon. So I said my bet is wrong. So you know, VC understands the bet is wrong. I'd like you to be a 10-bagger. Okay? I'm OK somewhere in the middle, but don't be that slow 10% per year growing company for five years, 10 years. How boring, OK? So you need to understand that about yeah. Since a lot of guys are you know, technology uh, oriented out here, I think we get obsessed with this fact that uh, businesses don't take too long to build out, which I've got, a, I've got a slide on that. But this is something just to put it into perspective. Yeah? But of course, when we are raising money, it's, not, you know, it's just all about money. Oh, yeah, we will figure out how to give it back later. Right? So you just go and whoever's giving you money, you go and raise it. Uh, but if you do have the luxury, please think about this. OK, building the business, it's yet work on, in progress, so I'm not going to talk much about it. I don't think I know too much about it. We're yet w working on it. Um, we just know a few things. One is it takes a long time to build a business. So I need three quick answers on average time to, take a hun to build a 100 crore company in India. Ma'am, you, uh, how long would it take to build a 100 crore company? Depends on the industry. Depends on the industry. Good question. Okay. Let's take technology industry. One year, two years, three years, gap. Yeah. Five yeah. To Sorry? Five to eight. Five to eight years. It's closer to some of my VC friends' answers. They, you know, I've got a range of five to ten from a lot of my VC friends. Anyone else? One last shot. Fifteen years. One five. Okay. So average time. Right. I'm not talking of bankrupt companies. I'm just saying average time. Companies who've gone bankrupt remove them, or they'll really skew it. Okay. Um, I didn't put up a graph out here because he. I did all this last night and uh, didn't have time. But go to Wall Street Journal. I, when I spoke about this to a uh, senior VC friend of mine, a partner in a pretty well-known firm, um, he argued with me when I gave him my number. Okay? And then one day he sent me, uh, sent me a link to a Wall Street Journal blog, which gave stat on top NASDAQ companies to reach $50 million in an IT hot sector, fast-growing sector. Okay? Average time was eight years. But these were outliers. These were already listed on NASDAQ. They're not a regular company. There were thousands of entrepreneurs behind that. And I think that is a big message which we as entrepreneurs need to get into our head. This takes time. Okay? Uh, my answer is somewhere close to 25 years. Yeah? So yeah, a lot of my VC friends have stopped talking to me because I keep pushing the 25-year thing. Because the whole model collapses, right? If you're going to say 25 years, buddy, are you mad? Okay? But yeah, yeah, I just think, look around you. Uh, 
look at bunch of companies because we only get to know of <coughs> some of the sexier companies. Yeah, uh, I mean I'm talking technology. You know, I'm not just uh, yeah companies like us. So why is it? Because learning slow, environment is not controlled, too many things happening, and if there was yeah, that is the only point I'd like to you know leave everybody with in terms of you know in terms of that business takes time to build. So you got a smart idea, you think it's cool, you're not thought about cash. Okay, somebody will think about cash. Even then, it takes time. Yeah, we just uh, you, you, you know I'm just speaking to some company with very smart guys who built a very nice company, and we might be taking it over. And amazing team, but just uh, you know. Uh, I think they, they faltered on perhaps assuming that it'll happen too soon. Yeah? Uh, we, so for us, anybody doing a non-tech business out here? Oh, bloody hell. Good, there's hope for India. That's it. OK, uh, so you'll have, uh, so don't do it, right? Unless you have lots of gun gumption, right? And uh, so if I look back, I'll do it very differently. You know? uh, so non-tech, hard, hard infrastructure issues. You know? he, this firm that we are talking to, they said, Manish, that, that software will work off the web in every store. I said, our stores don't even get internet connectivity consistently. Because, except for apartments and offices, even in Bangalore, retail outlets don't have good internet connectivity. You, know? you don't have buses for people to reach that shop. Yeah? It's, it's crazy. It's nightmarish for teams to even get. Some, some of them travel two hours to get there. So there are some issues you've got to think about. Soft infrastructure, courtesy. Like in a business like ours, customer service, we've got to teach a person to know Corel Draw, Photoshop, Microsoft Office, which I think is toughest, you know, for that person at least. Uh, speak English, and then say thank you and please, which is not in our culture. And I, uh, uh, I come from a Hindi-speaking family, so we would never say "Dhanyavad, mummy," you know, <laughs> never. "Kripya ye dena," never, you know. We only maybe sometimes we would say, "Please let me go down to play." That's it. But it's not part of our culture to say, please, thank you. And then we want this poor colleague of mine who's earning 8,000 rupees to learn all these things you know, and serve customers in high pressure environment. So that's a real soft infrastructure issue. Corruption. Every large company I've dealt with has asked me for money. Every. No exception. And hence, our revenue from enterprises, one of the reasons we've kept it at 20%. Yeah? Yeah, this is, yeah, you name the company out here, MNC as well as non-MNC. So uh, if, uh, of course, besides the government, the government needs corruption, it needs the money, they're underpaid, so I forgive them, but not MNCs, right? Uh, yeah, and finally, I gained a lot of respect for yeah, guys like Alok, you know, family business who've got intuition. They, they might come with some, uh, some wrong assumptions, but in general, the intuition is amazing. You can't beat it. And I was never a guy who liked family businesses, would never respect the intuition. Now I do. Yeah. Uh, my partner, uh, she comes from a family business, partner and my wife, and a small family business. Some things, you know, did a spot like that, which takes us years to figure out. Yeah. There are things in our business which I will not say because there's the guys from Sequoia here, which she told me not to do in year two which took us four years to finally accept, okay, internally. And I said, what a stupid thing. What, what, where's the reasoning for that? She, and she would say, uh, you know, uh, they can't argue, but say, I have a hunch about it, you know, or I think this doesn't seem good. Guys like Alok are superb at, uh, at that hunch, and I have a lot of respect for that. And I compare this to, I, you know, I tell my partner that you're like Tendulkar and I'm like Shastri. I have no talent, nothing, just throw the ball, Get it right at the spot. After 10 years, it'll fall on the bloody spot. You'll get a wicket. Okay. <laughs> While Tendulkar keeps, he just gots in there with an ankle injury, flick for the wrist, and it's gone. Right. So again, a lot of respect there. That's my last lesson for the day. That you know, business takes time. Business is like pickle. It's like achar. Takes seasoning to get its flavor out. And uh, if you really believe that, you need to marry well. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> Any not so comfortable questions, please? Yes, please. Uh, there's someone there. Hello. Questions for Manish? Yeah, sure. Hi, Manish. My name is Lalit. <coughs> Just have a simple question. Uh, since your business partner was your wife, yeah. did you have any uncomfortable questions from VCs to answer? Yeah. 
I think fairly so. So we did, uh, to be honest, I was surprised that there weren't as many questions. Yeah? I was extremely defensive right, uh, um, about this because I come from, uh, my dad's been in private service here. Yeah, so he, he, I remember him picking up the phone on Sunday, telling his boss, yes, sir, I will come, no one you know. We had a picnic plan. He scraps that because the boss has something, you know, I need some help in at home. So I hated family businesses. Secondly, so this was almost like building a family business, you know, your, your wife's the partner. But I, I think uh, yeah, I got over the initial discomfort. I didn't face as much resistance from, uh, uh, from investors because they did interact with Lalana as well and they realized that, oh, finally there's somebody in the company who knows something, right? <laughs> These guys just making the presentation, right? So that, that helped me, yeah, but it's not as bad as we think it is. Uh, hey, Manish. This is Venkat here. Uh, what is the reason behind choosing Bangalore as your location and not Mumbai since you're from Mumbai? Is there any? Yeah, uh, we couldn't afford uh, stores in Mumbai. It's very expensive. Real estate's where Bangalore seems to be a preferred place. You see a lot of uh, retailers set up shop out here. Uh, you can blow a lot of, uh, you know, your investors' money gets blown off more slowly in, in Bangalore than in Mumbai, right? So if, and Praveen Gandhi, my, you know, very d uh, dear investor of mine, he is in Mumbai. He told me, Manish, I'm going to triple the money I'm putting if you start the business in Mumbai. And very wise point, because he says, I prefer investing in companies which are around me. You know, in the Valley, PCs have their 60-mile radius funda, some other stuff. And um, I kind of refused that in coming out here. So uh, Praveen Bhai would be on my back every day if I, if I had opened this in Mumbai. Yeah. But yeah, real estate's the real reason. Question on uh, angel investing. So, uh, typically, uh, what is the tenure that they look for uh, before exiting, and uh, what is the ROI they uh, look for in general? Yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, and I think this is also a question you should pose to the VCs because they are in touch with angel investors, so they have some insight from the other angle into their mindset and thinking. Um, what I can share with the people I've uh, interacted with, because it's not a very mature community, it's only now that we've got a uh, you know, the, the Mumbai investors organized as a group. Um, I think most angel investors, at least, you know, the guys I would like to deal with, don't have a real expectation for an ROI. Uh, this is money that they lose which won't hurt. They have, interestingly, a lot of them don't even, uh, are not necessarily doing it uh, in a big way for greed. They've made enough money. You've got spare change, but you like this idea and you think it's interesting. I like the guys, I like the team, I'll bet on it. So I don't think there's an ROI expectation for sure. Exit, hence, is not there. Maybe one, not friend and family, angel investor, I did get a call, on, for call from once saying, Manish, my, there's this big uh, house that we're planning to buy. Uh, is there any chance of us you know, getting an exit? And, uh, there's another, so at the time there was no chance for him, but there's another angel investor who, uh, who's a friend who said, I want to go to Colorado Film School. I need some money. You think I can sell some printer stock? I said, damn it, I told you not to buy printer stock, right? Now you're making me feel guilty. Luckily, there were investors who were willing to buy him out. So I don't think there's a time frame, though, for either of them. But VCs might be able to throw a different light on this, yeah? Hi. So you told about your dad. So what does your wife think about your business? What, what, is, what does your wife think about your business? My wife's in the business, you know. Okay, she has no time to think about it. Okay, great. <laughs> great. She's, she's right now, I just messaged her saying, hey, this is running behind. I don't think we can do this lunch, which I promised. Uh, and uh, I don't know if you went for Rajesh's lunch, uh, Josh. But uh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, she says, yeah, I'm at one of the stores doing, you know, call a, we call a QSI, that's a quality standards inspection. So she's in the business. She's very much... Uh, you know, bought into it. Uh, I think more than anything, I started buying into her model you know, yeah. of the way we need to uh, run this. So that's great. Uh, what if printer had failed? Yeah. What would your next shot be? So I, you know, if printer had failed, uh, I had a plan B, right? I had hajam. That was my other plan. <laughs> I yet have a, say, and uh, if, yeah, you know, yeah, I think uh, I may have done that. Um, uh, you would have, or you know, even sought employment for some time because I tasted employment and say, hey, this employment not bad, man. You get money at the end of every month, so it's not bad. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah. So, uh, you know, on that uh, point of established players, the same, we get a lot of, we got a lot of this before we started the business. Yeah. I think I just finally got so tired of it. I said that I, I suspect I started the business just to prove everybody wrong. <laughs> Not because the business had a real valid model, maybe. You know, I stopped thinking about that. I said, what's this? These, these guys are not, because whoever mentioned it to me, you know, like uh, in Bombay especially, we came to Bom Bangalore, we didn't know GKVL existed. When I wrote my business plan, I didn't even know they existed. But GKVL's uh, market is different. We have a, uh, uh, you know, crossover about 5 to 7%. Okay? The way they deliver is different. And uh, for us to have lots of other players is great news. Staples is here, great news. Somebody else is telling the market as well that there are such print shops available. Office Depot is here, that's great news. We've tied up with them. I know I'm running out of time. Yeah? All right. Uh, thanks, Manish. Uh, thanks for sharing your journey. It's really enlightening to us and uh, yeah. great to have you here. Cheers.